Hello, I'm Nadia Giordano, and you're watching Woman Vision TV. It's where women talk. I have a fun and interesting guest today, Gail Roddy, who uh, has a blog that covers subjects like, among other things, marriage, mentorship, and dreaming. Gail is a lucid dreamer. So let's not hang around here. Let's go talk with her and find out what that's all about. Gail, I'm so happy to have you come see me today. I'm thrilled to be here, Nadia. Well, now, one of the reasons I asked you to come and talk to me today is you recently joined a writer's group that uh, I belong to, and I read your bio, and it talked about you being a lucid dreamer, as am I, and I had never really met or had a conversation with anyone that I knew was a lucid dreamer before. That's almost something that you do throughout your life privately. That's right. And, and for fun and, and I guess recreationally you might call it because it's uh, a lot more active way of, of dreaming. Mm -hmm. But why don't you give us a description of what lucid dreaming is and maybe what it isn't and then we'll go from there. Well to me lucid dreaming is when you're in the dream state mm -hmm. and you know you're dreaming. Yeah, yeah, me too. For instance, I've had dreams where, uh, let's say, a duck is walking across the room and it suddenly turns into a turtle and then turns into a rhinoceros. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's really strange. And so I would say to myself, ah, this is a dream mm -hmm. because a duck turning into a turtle turning into a rhino means I'm in the dream state. Okay, let me pay attention to what it's saying. So to me, that's lucid dreaming. Now, I've heard that some people say lucid dreams means that you can change the dream. You're, mm -hmm. You have the capability mm -hmm. to tr change mm -hmm. it. I've never been able to do that. I've never consciously tried. But from what I understand, it's all lucid dreaming. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, that makes sense because in, in uh, specifically the part about changing the dream, I have been able to do that. Okay. I don't have very many lucid dreams. They, months, sometimes years can go by before I have one. But a perfect example of the changing the course of the dream and while realizing you're having a dream, I use that to end or change a dream that's that's going bad, shall we say? Oh. And an example: I was being chased by dark, shadowy figures, and suddenly I realized this is a dream. This is going to be a bad dream. I'm not going to put up with this. I know I'm dreaming, and I stopped. I turned and I whirled around and looked at them, pointed my finger at them, and said, "You are not real." This is a dream. You have no power over me. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. And they just dissolved and shrunk into shadowy little gray things, like rodents or something. And they scurried off in all different directions. And I was left to change my dream, enjoy the scenery, go exploring. And everything was fine for the rest of the night. So that's an example of actually yes. being able to change. Absolutely. I wish it would happen more often but it's very rare that, that I've had one happen like that. And I would think that would be the case. If, if it's going bad, people would want to change it. Yeah. As opposed to just changing it for the sake of changing. Maybe yeah. changing because yeah. you're fearful, you yeah. don't like the outcome of where this is going, and so yeah. you want to change. Sure. Yeah, otherwise it's more of enjoying the dream yes. Yes. and uh, experiencing the vividness. I, I understand that lucid dreams seem often to be more vivid they are for Absolutely. me, me than too. an average average dream. Mm -hmm. Well, how young were you when you first started doing this then? Oh, I can remember having them my entire life before I really knew what they were. Me too, yeah. When I was so young, yeah. I thought, and I thought everybody experienced this, which is that's the case. You sure. Usually when you're sure. experiencing something very young, you think everyone must you be You think experienced. everyone does it. Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether it's something positive or negative, you think, I, you know, everyone must experience this. And yeah. then you find out that they don't. They and don't. And still, yeah. as you said earlier to this day, I don't get to talk to too many people that mm. talk about their dreams, period. Mm. And it's always been a fascination for me. It, it is fascinating. And I, too, was very young and, and had uh, dreams that uh, I, didn't, I didn't fully understand, didn't fully understand they were lucid dreams. I think the earliest one I remember, at the top of the stairs of a basement, 
I must have been like about seven, and it felt like, in, again, in this instance, it felt like the dream was going to turn into a sinister thing. There was a feeling of fear, and I reached out, and I saw my hand, which they talk about in some of the books. I saw my hand, and I touched the wall. I could feel it. It was cold, damp, and clammy, and I didn't like that, but I, in, even in that dream, I made the decision, I'm not going down those stairs. There's something creepy down there, and that's all that I remember, wow. but that was the very first one. <laughs> that you can recall. That I can yes. recall, yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Well, now, uh, can you do it at will when you go to sleep in the evening? Can you bring on these uh, lucid dreams, or do they happen when they want to? I'd say mostly they happen when they want to, but it's okay. interesting I've learned since I've been an adult, I guess, is that reading about them brings them on. Yes, yes. <laughs> or seeing a movie about dreams can bring them on. Yeah. But I've never been able to consciously, now if I go to bed and ask a question or something like that, that something's troubling me that I mm -hmm. want to know, that can bring it on. But yeah. generally, yeah, they just come and as will. As yeah, well. for me too, they usually happen when they happen. I try, I, I, I think about it before I go to sleep at night. Uh, a few years ago, I read uh, several books, but the only author that I remember was Stephen LaBerge, who wrote uh, several books on the subject. And after reading those books and, and making a mental note of some of the techniques he talked about, and I think one was the try to look for your hand in the dream and be aware of it and then recognize that you're having a dream. And after that, I did have a few more, and maybe one or two might have been during a time frame when I was trying to have a dream, but certainly not necessarily on the same day. <laughs> right, right. Now, I've not heard that about the hand, so visualize your hand as you're going to sleep. That's the thought? The, uh, yeah, that was the idea, and, and I've used it on and off, and uh, sometimes it has worked, where you do, you look at your hand before you go to sleep, and then you think about that. I'm going to look at my hand in my dream. That's going to tell me that I'm in a dream. It's just a point of, of oh, focus. Gotcha. And okay. uh, mentally thinking about that. And for some people, that yeah. seems seems yeah. to work. Interesting. Yeah, it is is kind of fun. And uh, Stephen LaBerge, like I said, was uh, one of the people that I read. Have you read any books on the subject? Oh, yes. Okay. I years ago, I haven't read Me too, yeah. Recently. yeah. Uh -huh. It was a long time ago, and I, I guess there are some newer books, which I have not yet read. Um, right. Robert Wagner, I think, is one. Yes, yes. Same name as Stephen LaBerge's book, just Lucid Dreaming. Right. But I haven't read his book yet. Have you read that I'll, one? I'll have or? to get that. No, I, but I have heard of them. I have Just heard. in the last couple of years. Yes. Yeah. yes. So I haven't done that yet. And, and I, I will get his book and, and read that one. Find out a little bit right. more about it. Well, now they, they talk sometimes about, and how does it work for you, as whether or not you're a participant or an observer in the dream. What is it, how does it usually happen for you? It's been both for me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm standing on the sidelines watching, mm -hmm. and then I may even shift in. A lot of times I shift back and forth yeah. where yeah. I can't tell whether I'm observing or whether mm -hmm. I'm a participant. Mm -hmm. So that's been my experience. What about you? Do you? Be... It's it's been both. Usually, I think I'm a participant. Okay. Not very often as an observer, and it just I almost suddenly you're in the dream and you're realizing that this is a dream. In set, oftentimes I'll wake up and have had dreams. It's like oh darn, I missed an opportunity <laughs> to recognize that that one was a dream. Wow. Or do something, but. Uh, the participant is fun because then you get to just observe what's going on and there's no fear because I'm always aware that I'm a participant. So whatever's going on, I'd say, okay, whatever's going down, I don't have to be afraid of it because that's not me. Yeah. That's yeah. not me. Yeah, and if you know it's a dream, that takes the fear away too. Yes. It's when you don't realize you're in a dream when the, when the fear can come up and yeah. the dreams can go bad. But sometimes. I rarely think that, and I wonder if that's a training over the years. Maybe. It could Maybe. be, now that we're talking about it, because I rarely don't know that I'm dreaming. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've gotten yeah. to the place now, I rarely don't recognize it. Yep, this is a dream. Oh, okay. I'm dreaming. Let's go. Let's see So you happening. literally, regularly, almost daily or nightly, I should say, 
uh, have lucid have the lucid dreams pretty, and they know your dream. Pretty much, oh. pretty much. Or I may go through phases where I have several a night for three weeks, yeah. and then it might taper off, and I don't have. It, you know, and then you can tell the ones that are just rehashing what you did that day. Yeah, yeah, Those, that's a different kind. Yes, and, that's a different guy. Yeah. But the lucid ones, oh yes, I have them regularly. Oh, what fun! What fun! Yeah, like I said, it's months and sometimes years in between the times. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I'm in a dream and I don't know I'm dreaming. It's oh. just and and seventy five percent of the time I don't remember them. Okay, and that's. Frustrating. When I w was younger and had recently read those books and stuff, I was remembering a whole lot more of the dreams. So would you have to write them down? A lot of people that helps. do the pad yes. by the yeah. I yeah. I've started doing that recently, but I would yeah. have such good recall of my dreams yeah. for years. I didn't need to do that. Yeah. I'd get up and write them down later. Yeah. Because a lot of times I'd wake up and not remember as many details. So I yes. have to spend a few hours yeah. letting it come to me. Yeah. And then I would write it down. Yeah, and getting those details down because then you remember them later. And Absolutely. if there's something you need to get out of the dream, it helps to have some of those details. That's right. Because otherwise they, they fade. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've had times where, let's say, for instance, something I'll be reading and it'll be about a piano. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. it hit me. Oh, I dreamt about that. Let me stop yeah. it. And I didn't have any recall until I read that yes. about a piano. And yeah. then I... Then it all came back. Yes, I dreamt I was playing, and I was playing Beethoven. It, you know, things like that. That happens quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. And let's see. Um, you then take some of your dreams and incorporate them into blog posts. Oh, right, right. And how does how does that work? Do you uh, is are the dreams the inspiration for your blog posts? Yes, and many times I will literally say in my blog post, uh, last night I dreamt the following. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a year ago, my husband dubbed me the sister whisperer because <laughs> like all that. of a sudden my dreams were starting to be more inclusive of of they're very woman centered. My dreams mm -hmm. have always been very woman centered. Mm -hmm. So they started being more about women in general and the things we go through through the stages of our lives. So that's why he called me the sister whisperer. So I started writing those dreams as a way to help other women mm -hmm. with they might be experiencing the same thing. That's been really fun and I get a lot of feedback that that's been very helpful. Do you have a couple of examples, some recent ones? I have one big example that I dreamt that at the end of a cul-de-sac, I was living at the cul-de-sac, and at the end there was an old house that was in real disarray. And it's night, you know, the typical, it's mm -hmm. night, and I'm out walking, and there's the North Star, and I get to this house, and I decide to go in. The front door is hanging on its its you know its side and that's so dreamlike oh yeah, so dreamlike so so yeah there's fog all you know there's no fog anywhere else but right around yeah, this house yeah, yeah. so i go in and i'm not afraid but i'm wondering why is the neighborhood allowing this house in disarray mm -hmm. to stay here somebody yeah. needs to fix it up yeah. so i go in and of course all of a sudden the candle appears sure and a match appears sure. and i light the candle and all of a sudden the room is illuminated and it's clear someone has started to rehab the inside. Okay. And so I go, okay, it's in disarray, but someone has started. Mm -hmm. Someone recognized this house needs to be fixed. It's solid as far as its foundation. It just needs to be rehabbed. And so I start singing this song. It's um, Walk On With Hope. It's from, I think that's from Carousel. Oh, okay. And I start singing this song, and it's all about this hopefulness of this house. And my heart just opened up. It was just a beautiful dream. And that's where it ended. And I think the message is just that no matter how your life goes, yeah. because they frequently say houses yeah. are your life. Yeah, yeah. And no matter how your life goes, there's always rehabbing that can be done. Yeah. It can always be fixed. And the idea that someone 
that has started now if I were reading that blog post I didn't see that one I've read several on your on your on your blog uh, I think the first thing would come to me is don't judge someone else either because if their house appears to be in disarray someone may have already Absolutely. started Absolutely. inside and working from the inside that's out. right and sometimes people rehab the outside first and yeah, then the inside yeah, yeah. but this person chose to start the inside Oh, I think that's great. It was. It was very yeah. cool. Very and cool. your website is uh, gailroddy.com. Very simple. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll put that on the screen in a second. Mm -hmm. Well, Gail, thank you for oh, coming by and talking so about lucid fun. dreams. Don't you just love it? <laughs> I have so much fun with it. We could talk yeah. about this all day.